everyone, Creeper here. Welcome back to another fan fiction reading. Today, we're back with more Naked Singularity. Where we left off is, was, yeah, um, Rarity had just received a book from the doorstep after Fluttershy had told Twilight to read, to make the book more personal. So, it's about to get a bit windy. And guys, I will admit, I have read ahead because I was trying to, um, record, but the recording got screwed up. And and that was my fault because of lack of, you know, of, how should I put it, um, noticing, because I noticed that I wasn't recording properly. So, now, I'm going to record properly now. So, here we go. What the fuck? Oh, wrong button. There we go. <sighs> okay, here we go. I don't see why I'm here, Rainbow Dash said. She was perched upon one of the higher bookshelves of Fluttershy's den, which put her about head level with the other ponies in the room. Fluttershy's bookcase weren't all that tall. We're here to help a friend, Fluttershy said. She walked into the room, a tray filled with the teacups and piping hot water, balanced carefully on her back, and she set it down gracefully and on the low table in the center of the room. Besides, you know... Oh, you like reading, Rarity said. She hadn't moved from her spot on the couch, the plain brown package that held Twilight's manuscript beside her. You're perfect for this. I like reading about Fairy Do and her awesome adventures, Rainbow Jazz shot back. She paused for a moment. This doesn't have Daring Do, does it? Fluttershy glanced at the package. I don't... I don't think so, she said. There were... There were... Probably be copyright issues with that, Rarity said. Besides, Daring Do is more for foals or young adults. She ended at noticing Rainbow Dash's glare. Fluttershy took the, a seat next to the coffee table. So, you ha so have you read it yet? She asked. No, I haven't even opened it. But Rarity nudged the package with a hoof and figured it would break it. Uh, <clears throat> we'd break it up into each section, divide it the pain, as it were. She, her horn glowed as she tugged the twine knot apart and peeled the paper wrapping away. Naked singular, evening horizons of lust. The title printed on the small type in the center of the cover page. Very blink. Okay. Now we know where the name came from, so here we go. Okay, oh. Okay, and eh, eh, there we go. Fluttershy, she said, not taking her eyes off from the page. What exactly did you tell Twilight? Um, I said to make it more, um, personal. Fluttershy ducked on her head and hiding her mane. More personal? That's not what we agreed to tell her. You were supposed to. Ugh. She trailed off into a sigh. You know what? Never mind. It had to be worse than the last one. Her horn glowed again, and she bro broke the manuscript into part, three parts, and she passed one each, each other to Rainbow and Fluttershy. Sorry. Ah! Rainbow da Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash. Sorry. Can't read correctly today. Seriously, earlier I was labeling food, and I ended up writing chicken grave instead of chicken gravy. Anyway. Remember, she said, Twilight put it on her. Remember, Twilight, she said, Twilight put a lot of time, heart, and effort into this. We need to be good friends and put as much effort into helping her. With that, she set the title page to the side and began to read the novel's first line. Mass, de mass distorts space. Greater concentrations of mass distorts, uh, distort space more greatly. Even Dean Glimmer knew this simple fact. Like she knew the back of the who. The theories of special relativity were fools play to a young librarian's unicorn. And she always believed the mysteries of time, space, and magic were firmly within her grasp. That was before she met him. Or galloped into her life. And now she realized how woefully incomplete the equations were. They were accounted for matter energy, but not for love. For just as mass distorts space, so does the love form from its own distortion. Greater love creates greater distortion. 
unlike matter crushed together under the force of gravity it forms a point of no return singularity of love a an eant horizon of lust beyond which no feelings can emerge sorry i paused there i couldn't really find how to pronounce that rarity stopped and returned to the top of the page. She read the paragraph again, and she was about to read it a third time when Mabel Dash's voice, quiet and code, broke the silence. Um, I don't know what a lot of these words mean, she said. She sounded lost. That's fine, Rarity said. It's a bit uh, uh, different than Twilight's last attempt. It seems to be more... She trailed off, searching for the right word. Technical? <clears throat> She glanced over to see how Fluttershy was doing. Pegasus was staring at her page, eyeing her wider than Rarity had ever seen. Her eyes, her cheeks practically glowing with fierce blush. Did you find a steamy one? <clears throat> steamy section, she asked. Fluttershy bobbed her head ever so slightly. Can you re eat it for us? The blush intensified. Fluttershy shook her head. Rarity blinked. Romance novels were like a sixth food group for a Fluttershy. Nothing Twilight could have come up with should have even made be able to garner such a response. Sorry, I kind of uh, was about to stutter. She <clears throat> gently pulled the page out from under Fluttershy's hoof and floated them back over the couch. <clears throat> Evening Glimmer moaned into his shoulder as some. Something solid, roughly equivalent to ooh, three eight point five of the Mo's scale of mineral hardness, pressed against her flank. It was what firmer than <clears throat> it was somewhat firmer than cal alcite, though not as unforgiving as fluoride. Yes, the librarian cried. Yes, take me, you you ruffian. Rarity glanced down at the bottom of the page. Sure enough, there was a detail. A Mark as another asterisk on <clears throat> on the density and chemical composition of uh, calcite and fluorite and several other rocks. The notes spill over onto the next page as well, with suggestions for additional reading. Fluttershy, she said again, I need to know exactly what you told Twilight. Wow. Seven minutes in, that's what we got. That is what we got. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. An hour later, the three friends had managed to chew through approximately a dozen pages each. Pans were mixed along with the three. A rarity ha was perhaps the most erudite and most educated and most well positioned to understand Twilight's technically accurate love scenes. Even so, she found herself reading over each once several times they bore repetition she flipped over a new page and read evening glimmer collapsed under the mattress like an electron falling to a lower energy state three times every hour for the past six she whispered breathlessly yeah, they're going to name a new constellation after you not constant after you only if we provide them with a sufficient large data set he whispered back who the what male whispers that? What male whispers that? Anyway. Uh, okay. Seriously. I can't, I can't. I have to go on this. No male will ever say something like that in bed, for one. I don't see how that would turn any woman on. I will be honest. If I meet a woman who has, like, a science fetish, you're, I, I, I would like to shake your hand for that. So, you'd be probably reading this, like... <laughs> anyway, Rainbow Dash surprisingly seemed to be enjoying her section. The fact that she skipped over the pa a paragraph with more than two lines probably helped her along. This was actually pretty good if you ignore the boy part, she told all the others. Check this out. Prism Slash reared up to his full height, towering over like a stallion slightly taller than she was. No more or evening glimmer, it's too long. Oh, you've haunted my dreams like a Jungian archetype. If her unrequited love prepared to be taken, he cried. Rarity attempted to 
to digest that failed, then circle back to the name. Prism Slash. Yeah, he was a blue... Yeah, he was a blue sky pegasus stallion, uh... And with a... She paused to look at the word. Prismatic mane? And he's the fastest flyer in all Equestria. Sounds pretty awesome, huh? Okay. You can already get what this is going. Rarity attempted to... Oh, uh, Rarity and Fluttershy exchanged a glance. Awesome indeed, Rarity finally offered. He seems a bit familiar, don't you think? Uh, no, never met any pony like him, Dash said. Too bad, too. He was really given to her. She started reading another passage. Harder, she moaned. Give me at least ten newtons of force. Their bodies os oscillated together in the pendulum of period of one over ten F. Rarity felt the, the, <clears throat> the headache turning. She put Prism Slash out of her mind for a moment and turned to Fluttershy. How are you, Dot? How about you, darling? How is your section? Oh, it's, um, interesting, Fluttershy said. She was blushing again. Evening Glimmer has a mare friend. Let me guess. It's, it's a yellow pegasus? Flutter <clears throat> Fluttershy, I shook her head minimally. Orange Earth Pony? She shook her head again. We already sighed a headache was back now. Of course, of course. White Unicorn. Fluttershy bit her lip. After a long minute moment, she gave Rarity a tiny nod. C kind of? She raised an eyebrow. Kind of? Do tell. Man, you could... Guys, you can feel the cringe. You can feel the pain that Rarity's feeling right now. Oh. You can just feel it! Oh! Ugh, okay. Fluttershy flipped back a few pages through... <clears throat> Sorry, I do the voices. Fluttershy flipped back a few pages through a portion of the manuscript, searching for a particular line. Eventually, she found and began to read. My name is Uncommon, she sl uh, The slutty what? Eight. <clears throat> the slutty what? I don't know unicorn mare said. Her pelted bore a curious molted pattern, like a slab of co lab coat used to an MA husbandry experiments for too long. I hear that there's a librarian in a pony book looking for some. Oh dear, um, looking for some hot, hot mares on uh, mares TV action. <laughs> like they used hot twice. Well. Thank you, Twilight, Rarity said drearily. I suppose that could have been worse. Oh, there's more, Rarity said. Lots more. Nice, Ra Rainbow Dash said. I'll trade you sections when we're done. Unfluttershy. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I can't get over this. It, it's just so cringy. Uh, uh, here we go. Ugh. <sighs> Twilight Sparkle was a happy pony. Um, <clears throat> the long nights were finally at an end. The novel was complete, and her who's her friend, her friend slash editor Rarity. She imagined the fashionista swooning over the complex sentence, its erudite prose, scientifically accurate descriptions, and technically performed her metaphors at the act of a beautiful lovemaking. It was probably the best romance novel. Rarity had ever read. She realized, probably the best romance novel ever written. What sort of award did she give out for excellence in romance, not romance novel writing? Sometimes, and it's um, prestigious, certainly. She'd probably have to go to Canterlot to accept it. Oh! Who was she kidding? She giggled with herself. Well, the award committee would come to her for the masterpiece. Twilight? Hey, Twilight yelped at the drop of the book look she had been carrying. She spun around to see Spike watching her early at the kitchen door. Oh, hello, Spike. <clears throat> she trotted over to him, beaming. He leaned back as she approached. Uh, you're a good mood today, he said. Get a new book? No, someone, something, something better. She enjoyed the shocked expression for a moment before hitting I attended a literary recital in Canterlot this evening. She breathed. Wow, can I come? <clears throat> Twilight blinked. No, no, he could not. She cast about for a reason, then she settled on a version of the truth. 
Well, you can if you want, she said. It's a love story, though. It's kind of mushy. Ew! He made a face. Never mind, then. I'll stay here. Another victory for reverse psychology. She beamed and roughed his spines affectionately. That's fine, Spike. It's not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> She's gonna recite it. She's gonna recite this story in front of people. Now, I, I've gone very far in the story before, and they've actually, there's some stuff that's gonna make you cringe more at this. So here we go. Okay, prism slash leaned over evening blue or pine form. The lavender coat glistened, glistened with sweat in the fading afternoon light. The cooling effects of the evaporation of sufficient to quiet the thin fires burning in her heart and loins. See Dalton et al. for a completion discussion for the evergreen rates of psychological effects thereof. Librarians, he whispered huskily, you drive me mad with lust. Evening glimmer moaned. Never before had any pony stirred up such incredible passion within her. Her resonance to his advances diminished with the inverse proportions of the area of conduct between her body, between their bodies. Contact between their bodies, my bad. Rarity set the page down and rubbed her temple with a hoop. Her mood had not sufficiently improved since she found the manuscript lying on her doorstep. Girls, I'm not sure there's much else we can do, she said. I think we should go have another talk with Twilight. All of us? She shot a glance at Fluttershy, who ducked beneath her bangs. Why? This is awesome, Wait, angled I said. She nosed through the section of the manuscript, found the page she had augured for reference, and began reading. The question is, why are you reading it? Ugh. Evening Glimmer panted a prism slash. <clears throat> Evening Glimmer planted a prism slash went to work. Their hips rotating in time with each other, with two massive objects orbiting the constant center of gravity, a classical two-body problem. Faster, she cried. Do you even know what that means? Rarity asked. It was possible Riverdash did, whether ponies sometimes had a strong grounding of the physical science, in which Dash had never swore well, own with the with real entity of the subject. She may ha have some sort of background expense of astronomy or another. Duh, they're having sex, Rainbow Dash said. Come on, Rarity, jeez. Or probably not, Rainbow Dash decided. Daring do novels were apparently still her speed. Yes, well, this sir. <clears throat> well, yes, well, this certainly is the case, she said. But I still think we need to provide some new guidance before she in invests too much time and efforts in these scenes. Fluttershy, what do you think? No response. Rarity glanced over to see Fluttershy and grows in a portion of the novel. Her face blushed in bright pink. Fluttershy. Eep. Pegasus is ducked under the wings. Sorry, I was just a maybe you should read this part. Rarity sighed and put... Pulled the page over to the couch. The page somewhat felt so sudden in her grip. She just, she, <clears throat> just being around it was making her wish for a shower. She held all this far away from her face as she could read. Uncommon, the ran a tender who down the trembling mare's side. Don't worry, love. It's just us now. No one has to know your terrible dark, dirty secret fantasy as long as you do as I say. Evening Glimmer moaned with fear and lust with approximately two, uh, two, three, two, five ratio. The emotions, emotions mingled in the st st uh, still air ions, this oscillating the Soviet solution. Please, please don't tell my friends. I'll let you uh, use your library for your perverted magical rituals. I'll do. Who anything? That's right, Rarity whispered. Now, now then, when do you want? What do you want first, the club or the paddle? The paddle! The paddle! Rarity's eyes honed at her name. It had been crossed out with the word uncommon penciled in above it. She signed again. We're going to talk to her now. Uh, uh, uh. You 
can tell she's thinking about them in these scenes. What the fuck is in her mind? Anyway, I need a drink. My throat's sore. Fuck! <sighs> the evening crowd has just arrived at the after-dinner coffee is when Twilight stepped into the door. Sip was a <clears throat> sip was a tent any coffee house, which she remembered fondly from her uh, days in the as a student in Canterlot. The coffee wasn't all that great, but the shop offered a quiet spot of relaxation. Away from the hustle and bustle of the castle of Celestia's court, a spot on at the far end of the spacious room was cleared of tables, chairs, and all replaced by raised stages and microphones. Te technician ponies were busy plugging in wires, adjusting the overhead lighting, and many of the nearest tables had already filled, and the quiet buzz of the conversation per per permitted the air as customers arrived in the evening recital. Good evening, ma'am. Are you here for the reading? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Twilight turned to see the young orange peg Pegasus was with a pair of hipster-ish glasses smiling at her. To judge by her ape, and she was one of the uh, ba baristas. Okay, I kind of did it, gave him a voice. Hello, yes, I was wondering if I was there, the spot left for tonight. Any spot left for tonight? Her smile waned. You, try Miss Sparkle, for you, Miss Sparkle, will be glad to add your spot in the lineup. What sort of work will you be presenting? A chapter from a novel I was working on? I'm working on? It's a, a love story, sort of, of sorts. She paused a moment. If you don't mind me asking, how did you know who I am? Oh, everyone knows Princess Celestia star pupil, she gu she gushed. <clears throat> yeah. We're very honored to have you here tonight, I should add. This is a certainly going to be exciting. <laughs> Why do I act out the characters sometimes? I I'm not joking, guys. When I read, I sometimes act out the characters' expressions and actions. I don't know why. And it's really weird. Anyway. <clears throat> Twilight's blushed slightly. Hopefully she couldn't tell beneath her coat. Well, I just hope it, it'll keep every ponies keep every ponies entertained. Of course you will, she assured him. Take a seat near the front. I'll send somebody al some po when you're along with the coffee in a moment. Regular. Double, she corrected. She made made her way to the front of the room. It was bigger than that she remembered, which a space from at least hundred ponies in the audience. Around half that <clears throat> number were already seated, with more filling the, the mo e filling every moment. Ah, God, I'm stuttering again. Sorry, guys. I am very sorry. Uh, she found out a spot at the last empty table left in front of row and took a seat. Her horn glowed, and a slim bound man and shirt floated out her saddlebag onto the table table before her. She only had time to make a copy of a check <clears throat> of one chapter, but it was the best. The climax was in as it were she tilted at her own joke. The climax, as it were, tilted at her own joke. Twilight? Twilight jumped at her seat and the page falling on the table. She hastily sloped <clears throat> scoped it up and spun around to face a familiar voice and had a call to her mom? She got to the unicorn and met air standing behind her. I thought the thought possessed her in her mind into a screeching halt. Look, Oron, I was right, it is her! Twilight's mother, a pale gray unicorn who was the stri uh, per uh, striped purple mane, and stepped up and wrapped her in a hug a few feet further back from the blue unicorn stallion went with a darker blue mane, trotted up beside them. What's worse for when you're reading? Question is, guys, what's worse when you're um? Um, I'm pretty sure some guys could relate to this. Guys, um, you're watching porn in your room, right? And then your parent walks in, right? This is kind of the same thing. Anyway, here we go. Twilight, we didn't know you were in Cantalock. Her father said, "Did so? Did you come for the recital? What to do? Bluff, lie, flee?" Twilight considered all the options. Before the calmer, the more thoughtful part of her psyche came online. She had nothing to be embarrassed about. The recital was a cultural event, event for mature, educated ponies who were 
appreciate the value of her work. Besides, she was going to be a famous author. Her parents would have to find out about her story someday. So today was as good as any day. Yeah. <sighs> yes, yes I did, she said, stating of her, her flight. In fact, I'm reading a section from my new book. She checked mine tilted abruptly. You know, your new books, Star Spark, Arkle seemed to at her. Oh, my little Twilight, it, it, a novelist at such a young age, too, Oriana. What, what is this book about? It's a, uh, her courage flew to the moment. It's um, a romance novel, she finished softly. Her parents had to lean forward to hear. Romance novel? Uh, Twilight, that's not going to be embarrassed about. We're all adults here. Why? I love reading a good love story as much as the next man. The dad rolled his eyes and nevertheless smiled at her. As long as you're, you're happy, Sparky, she said. He said she blushed at the use of her nickname. I'm sure you'll make us proud. Twilight? <clears throat> Sorry, right. She uh, visualized the blank checklist, adding an empty spare at the top. Step one, make parents proud. Why? They have no idea what she's written. Oh god. Because <laughs> I do know that some romance novels are not just about sex. Seriously. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, here's the last one. <clears throat> so wait, what's the salty alkaline coil? Rainbow Dash Dash. She was hovering aside. Rarity and Flourish as they made their way across the Ponyville Library. The Page's Twilight manuscript still had her hooves. Her distracted, her distracted flying habits had already sent her, her bubbling into a f no fewer than three ponies. A lamp post and a cabbage stall, all of course of, um, of their brief journey. Um, what's the context? Context, Flourish asked. Prism Slash just finished another Matt Earthon session, eating glimmer. It was, she was using her tongue to it was sweet, re, sweat, <laughs> sweet, I can't, uh, sweet, rarity broken rather hastily. <sighs> she was looked around fiercely, just, it's just sweet, and if you, you don't recall, we're in public, she hissed at, at them, Rainbow Dash and Flutter, I both blushed at the reminder, Dash particularly recovered first. Jeez, Rarity, you don't have to be so uptight. It's just a story. It's just... It's a story that's not appropriate for reading out loud, R Rarity said. She shot her friend a glare, and then turned back to the destination the library was dead ahead. It, <clears throat> I'm stuttering again. What the fuck? It's open window shining like a beacon in the dimming evening light. Now remember, she told him. Twilight put a lot of time and effort in this story. We need to be gentle and encouraging with her. Encouraging her to write other stories. She added the last part with a glare in Rainbow direction. The three stopped up in front of the library's front door. Gentle, all encouraging. Rarity repeated to herself. She took a deep breath, opened the door, and walked inside. Okay, right there is where I'm going to cut off. So, oh, um, oh, wrong button. Here we go. Sorry if you hear the whole boom, boom thing. It's my computer. Don't worry about that. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this story because it was um, oh, a bit different. It was, we're getting further, and we actually gone pretty far. I'm actually getting close to the last part I was at. So, um, anyway, so I hope you guys like this, and if you want... Remember, I've said this in the last two videos of um, fan fiction reading. So, if you guys like write fan fiction and you want to um, me to read it, I'll happily read it aloud for you. And I'm sorry if I stutter it. I'll sor I'm sorry if I stutter it, but I will be happily read your fan fiction, give you my views on it, and I'll be happy to read any fan fiction you suggest too. So. I think that's about it, guys, so I'll catch you guys later. Creepers gotta creep. Bye-bye!